Skyacraft is an illegal pay-to-win EULA breaking server. Even past those really bad things, it still wasn't a very good server. At first glance, it looks pretty okay. You would notice that there was a lot to do. There was plenty of minigames, parkour, factions, creative, and everything else you could expect from a server. However, the chaos that was navigating to all those different areas was a big drawback. When you first log in, you have to register a password. After that, you can play the game, but once you enter into a new part of the server, you must repeat this process. This password is for your account's protection. It wasn't until later that I found out that the server was a cracked server. If you're new to Minecraft and don't know what a cracked server means, I'll explain it to you. Cracked Minecraft is an illegal copy of the game that does not require authentication that you own the game. With a cracked server, anyone, whether they own a copy or not, can join the server and play as any person because of this lack of authentication. In fact, I saw what I thought at first was Captain Sparkles, also known as Jordan Marin, a hugely famous YouTuber, but instead was likely someone who had stolen his account. This is a bad thing because if the real Captain Sparkles wanted to hop on and play, he wouldn't be able to do so because someone would have already registered a password to his account, which he would not know, effectively blocking him out of his account. However, let's get back to talking about the other things about the server. The layout of the slash spawn seemed disjointed and very cluttered with needless information everywhere. A server spawn is supposed to be simple and easy to navigate so that it can leave a good impression, which this server fails at doing. However, once you navigate your way through the mess, you will find the games. They had a good paintball arena that was fun to play and also a decent kit PvP map. After playing for a bit, I noticed something very distasteful. I had hit the paywall. Each time I had died and respawned in the minigames, it would cost in-game money. I started off with a decent amount of money, but through the short time playing, I had burned through all of my in-game cash without being previously warned of the cost. There was no sign stating that each respawn costed X amount of in-game cash. They had a faction and vanilla survival world that had a lot of stuff everywhere inside of it. There was a lot of builds that seemed to just confuse and look messy everywhere. These ruins weren't the normal kind of ruins seen in a typical faction server. Those ruins of old bases are fun to explore. These, however, were intact and strange. Having it that way made me question whether or not it was actually part of the local world spawn. And if they were, what purpose did they serve? I didn't find any purpose for them. It was in this faction world that I found something that was needless and annoying. Each time you cut a tree, it would scream at you. And if you hurt the tree too much, it would hurt you back. This was a very annoying thing to have to deal with in order to get resources inside of the faction world. After playing in this faction world, I noticed out how to make money so that I could go back to playing minigames. You were to mine down resources from either the faction world or the vanilla world and sell the stuff at the slash spawn shops. This would allow you to slowly get money to play minigames. Mining up the resources to get money to play the minigames was just tedious and took way too long. Upon looking at the website, I discovered more things that just weren't right. In the first spawn room, there was a sign that read, To get staff, visit the store, or apply online. This bothered me, so I looked into it. And there it was. You can purchase any of the staff ranks without having any knowledge of the server. With these packages, you weren't buying responsibility. You were buying abuse privileges. Also in the store, I found that you could purchase in-game currency with real-world cash. This was likely the reason why it took so long to get money from the faction and vanilla world. Mojang themselves have said, you cannot charge real world cash for in-game currency, which this server does. Overall, this entire server upset me, and it was really annoying to play. Oftentimes, games I liked wouldn't start because of a lack of players. There was a lot of lag because of the huge list of plugins per server. People were not necessarily who they said they were. The whole server layout was terrible and cluttered. The chat was always too hard to read or keep up with, making chatting with friends in-game near impossible. So the final verdict is a 2.5. This server has a large player base that I feel it doesn't deserve. I wouldn't recommend playing on this server. 
If you value your account, then avoid this place, seeing as it is a great place for trolls to hang out.